that's a different story. So my story is called Three Strikes. October 1st, 1993. Her discarded red ballet leggings, like a gash in the California brush. Girl as object, as scarlet fiber. Girl as a nightgown pulled up around the hips. A girl as meat. There are the things that we know. Richard Allen Davis broke into the home of Eve Nichols while she slept. He crept quietly past her bedroom and past the bedroom of her oldest daughter before entering the room he really wanted. The room he had cased in the darkness, unknown for several days prior. He wanted Polly, a dark-eyed Winona Ryder beauty staring out from a girl's face. That night, Polly had a slumber party with two of her girlfriends from school. By the time Richard entered Polly's bedroom with a knife steadied in his hand, the girls had already fallen asleep after playing dress-up, dreaming in their costumed girlhood. He woke the girls up with his knife to their throats, threatening to kill them if they screamed. He told Polly that if she made a sound, he would slit her throat and those of her sleeping mother and sister. Richard tied up the slumber party guests back to back, gagged them with their own socks, and put pillowcases over their heads. Then he stepped out from that same bedroom window with a sobbing Polly over his shoulder, like a 1930s film monster escaping into the darkness. And just like that, Polly Hannah Class became the first viral kidnapping of the internet age at 12 years old. Copiers and fax machines and websites memorized her face, a closed mouth smile that could have been anyone's generic school photo. Halloween that year was a collective panic attack. In the wild, herds know their enemies immediately. When a lion approaches, Elephants will encircle their babies to prevent them from being picked off. For my parents, this instinctual behavior looked very much like making me go to a trunk or treat at my uncle's church instead of trick-or-treating with my friends like I had done every year before. Now, instead of getting trapped in a trunk, you could get chocolates out of trunks at a church. What's safer than a church? It was all displacement, distraction. The demons wanted to steal your kids while they slept. The demons wanted to fuck your girl children and snuff them of life. There was nothing spiritual or metaphysical about it. Nothing a church or a trunk or treat could do about it. The undertow of wickedness. The sickness was visceral. The flesh of your own children, visceral. Parents watched a little closer. But that night I woke up in a sweat, screaming, imagining a man standing outside of my own bedroom, tapping a knife on the window. December 4th, 1993. It is my 10th birthday, and my grandfather gives me a radio that doubles as a karaoke set. It has a gold microphone. To thank him for this present, I subject my entire family to an impromptu concert at a birthday party. I turned on the radio. Career criminal Richard Allen Davis led the FBI to the body of Polly Class. Davis admitted to burying Class in a shallow grave off of Highway 101, about 20 miles north of where she was abducted. Her face recedes into the brush. Her girl body, bone, gristle. Her body is found a few under a few pieces of lumber with her nightgown pushed up over her waist. Her body was too decomposed to determine whether or not she had been raped before she was strangled to death, but given Davis's prior convictions, it is widely accepted that she was. And that is when the quiet terror entered my life. Suddenly there was a menace following me everywhere, stalking behind me when I walked to school, watching me every time I disrobed and stepped into the shower. At night, staring out of my own bedroom window, from my own bunk bed, just 30 minutes away from where Polly was taken, I pictured myself as one of the girls at her slumber party. 
I imagined singing into Polly's hairbrush or sharing secrets about the boys we liked. I stood in front of my mirror and examined my own budding adolescent body, trying to understand what made it vulnerable to men. I tied my leggings around my own mouth and screamed into them. <laughs>